welcome to Coastal Conversations. Here are your hosts, Sarah Carter and Brian McKay. Welcome in to Coastal Conversations. Once again, I'm here with Sarah Carter. What's up? And yes, and I am Brian McKay. And uh, before we get started on this week's episode, I have a uh, just a retraction and you know just some information that was presented wrong in the first episode and you know, brought to my attention by uh, Mary Bradley. Shout out to Mary when we were talking about how I used to switch switch benches. Oh yeah. Uh, during you know whenever Renee and uh, my dad's teams would play each other. She said, that was when you were a lot younger. I said, this is very true. That's very true. Because when when I was in high school, it was all about beating y'all. And when you and Mary were both seniors, we actually had y'all at halftime. It was 17-17. This was the year that y'all won the state championship. Oh, I remember this. It was (laughs) (laughs) 17-17. And y'all came out of halftime, and it was about as rare a face as I've ever seen Renee Gladner have. And um, coming to the bench, halftime, you know, the second half starts. We literally, we throw the ball in bounds. Our point guard, Colstrom Clark, bless her heart. She walks across half court. You jump at her. She jumps back behind half court, and the game was, you know, it was off the rails. That was it. I remember that. Yeah. I I do remember, and I do remember probably clipboards thrown and lots of yelling. And a... uh, Flip switch, especially in her point guard, and yeah, so I do remember that. It's weird what you remember about. I mean, that was how old are we? That was thirty six. I mean, ago. that was eighteen years ago. Yeah, two thousand. Yeah, so I love to re- to relive the the glory days, as I like to call it. Yeah. So this episode, we're gonna talk a little bit about nutrition. Yes, we are. Do you hear that? Mm. That that's the sound of all of my family. Anybody uh-huh. that does with me actually turning off the uh, <laughs> their, shut their, it their, down. Their podcast at this point. I already know what goes on at your house. Mm-hmm. They need to be listening. Yeah, you you've been talking about the way my dad cooks for years. Years <laughs> yeah, and yeah, drinks. Yeah. It's good. Sweet tea, yeah. soda. Uh, food is good. It's just very, very, very uh, unhealthy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, but yeah, the foundation <laughs> of a healthy life. That's what I got from the little bit of research I did. <laughs> so, I'm going to basically make this like an interview uh, show, and I mean, maybe I'll ask the questions and you can roll, you can rattle them off. That sounds good. Basically, what, um, and if you go to the website, <clears throat> crossfitportside.com, you will see in the nutrition section, there's a pyramid there and it basically shows you that uh like i said the nutrition is the foundation for a healthy life gives you all kind of insight into what that means and you know how you can go about dealing with that uh what would you like you know people to know about its benefits yeah i mean i think as a going back to being an athlete at a young age and then going into college um, playing, getting out of college, um, you know, didn't, I had some health classes, didn't know, you know, I, I knew I was fit, um, I could kind of eat what I wanted and could still perform, so I thought, um, you know, and just, I always knew there was a pre-game meal, um, prior to and that we had carbs and um, that carbs got you through you know workouts or through games and so there was a few things that that I was very familiar with but it didn't come into play more I guess into my mind until I got into CrossFit and when you look at the pyramid you see that nutrition is the base and everybody's probably heard it. You can't outrun or out-exercise a bad diet. It is very true. If you put nutrition as your foundation, just as you would a house, then you are going to build a house with some re- very solid foundation. So everything from that bottom up is going to be well-oiled. Um, if you build a house on rocky foundation, your house is broken um and a little more rocky so that's that's what we preach and we talk a a lot about 
nutrition now in CrossFit because there's a lot of things that go into it. Um, number one, you know, am I eating every three hours? Am I drinking enough water? Am I getting enough veggies? How many, you know, carbs am I getting? Proteins, fats. Yes, we need them all. Um, and then, you know, am I, am I sleeping at night? How am I recovering? I mean, there's so many things that, en that encompass um, nutrition. And, you know, that, that's where the pyramid comes into play is have you put enough emphasis on that nutrition part? You can come in and work out all day, every day for a um, year, two years, and not see as many results as you want to and there's one reason why it's because you have not focused on your nutrition so if I were to change my nutritional habits that would make it, make in the long run make working out a lot easier it would you would have more energy you would be able to recover better um, you would sleep better and you would burn fat over burning muscle because you would understand what your body needs. We all need something different. Mm -hmm. That's why, um, and you'll pro I'm sure you'll probably ask me about how our program works, but um, it, it would help tremendously. Now, would you potentially see a little bit of a lull early on, especially if you are kind of ridding your body of crap? you know, the sugars and all the crap that you've been feeding, absolutely. But it's only going to take a couple of weeks to three weeks of really good um, eating and cleaning out your system to kind of reboot it and get you back on track. So, like, the like when we were at Louisiana Tech, you and I and Spoon and everybody, we would all do the 24-day challenge for Advocare. Mm -hmm. And the first little part of that, you're doing all those little pills and everything that's helping you clean your system out. Mm -hmm. And we all joke, and we basically spend every minute in the bathroom during oh, yeah. that little period. <laughs> Where, like, as far as something like that coming in, and that, that, that's something that just basically is a jump start, correct? Yeah, and, and I'd have to go back and, and think more about what that the 24-day challenge Yeah, because you, you don't even was. do ever care as much no, as you want. No, yeah. not really. Mainly because it's a quick fix, mm -hmm. um, and there's nothing wrong. I mean, their cleanse is mild, and, and it's fine, um, and you ate on it. It wasn't like a crazy right. cleanse that you just, you know, drank apple cider vinegar, and that's about it for whatever many days, but... Yeah, so the difference in like something like that and what we do is that's a 24, 30 day, you know, whatever. I've dropped some weight, I'm good, and then what have you learned? Right. So, you know, our goal is to teach you how to eat for the rest of your life. Like, it's easy to say, oh, I need to order, you know, set these many meals to get me through the day. Okay, well, you know, those meals are not custom to Brian as they're custom to me. You need something completely different than I need. Yeah. So that's what our nutrition, nutrition coach, Melinda, teaches you is how, what you need, how to make it sustainable, and how to, to live it for the rest of your life without going, oh, well, I'll never eat another piece of cake. Yeah, you will. I'll never eat another piece of pizza. Yes, you will. We're going to teach you how in a very healthy way so that when you do that, it's not life or death, and you're still on the right path. Yeah, I mean, I mean you, you say, like, your nutritional plan would be different from than mine. And, and just feeding off of that, like, I have Crohn's disease. Mm -hmm. You know I have Crohn's mm -hmm. disease. And, and with that, there are certain things I can't eat. And is there, like, plans for people like that? that well, and we work with a registered dietitian. Mm -hmm. So the first thing that, that she would probably tell us to do is for you to talk to your doctor right. and make sure it was good. There's so much out there as far as like Crohn's and, you know, gluten-free diets and this and that. Bottom line is, and even for you, whole foods. Yeah. Whole foods. You know, you stay away from um, anything processed. It's going to help your Crohn's. Right. Um, you know, and, and shoot, every time you turn around the corner, you know, is it hard to, to get whole foods, like true whole foods sometimes, but you do the best that you can. Right. 
um, you know, and, and get as much, you know, from farmer's markets and maybe uh, organic stuff that you can because it's like everything is starting to be pro processed because people want easy and they mm. want simple, but it's unhealthy. I know one thing that I've learned uh, now that I've started kind of like the the Blue Apron deal that yeah. I started, mm -hmm. uh, just because I'll be I'll be the first to admit I've never been one that liked cooking. Mm -hmm. I just wasn't a cooker. Uh, so yeah, when Sarah talks about the way my dad greases up and puts everything in flour, uh, yeah. So that's that's what I've lived on my entire life. Yeah, and, you know, and just this whole Blue Apron deal and. Me starting that, I learned a lot about different things that I never even thought about. You know, like you, you know, I never would touch a tomato, wouldn't oh, touch any kind yeah. of peppers, oh, yeah. and I'm eating all that now. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot, you know, when you add that to say like a spaghetti or you put a a tomato on a grass fed burger. I mean, it it does a lot for you mm -hmm. and it makes you. You know, you, you you get full, you get, you know, you have a much better palate, um, just a lot of benefits that vegetables and things like that go into into your daily diet when you're able to implement mm -hmm. like that. And I've lost 15 pounds and, um, you know, just very minimal working out right now. Yeah. Just off of Blue Apron and, and you know, not just Blue Apron, just that kind of living and even when I'm not on that, I still go out and I go and I kind of, what I did was I started it just to kind of see what they send yeah. and how they go about their recipes. And then I just go buy the stuff for myself mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. do it like this. You know, I won't say which way is cheaper. I mean, I hadn't really come to that conclusion yeah. yet because at the end of the day, they send you all the ingredients for right, you. Right, right. Uh, are you just cooking it for yourself? Yes. Yeah. And there, I have, I'm on the two... Uh, the two serving diet, okay. the two serving uh, meal plan, and you know basically like they send you two burgers, okay, and or they send you two two servings of spaghetti, uh -huh. or whatever I choose, the chicken, I got you, you know anything, the salad meal, whatever, uh, and I'll cook it. Mm -hmm. I'll cook it all. Mm -hmm. I'll eat one for you know whatever meal, lunch, dinner, and then the next day the the yeah. second one is for lunch. Okay, and I'm doing it by myself because. Ain't nobody going to do it. Ain't nobody going to do it yeah. with me. No, I know. <laughs> that's hard, too. I mean, and that's the biggest thing that, that, that we found is, like, you know, like, the wife may want to do it. The husband's not going to do this. And, and I'm not going to do this for the, you know, the kids. I'm like, turn it into an entire healthy situation for your family, you know. Mm. However that can be. Um but it's hard if you don't have, you know, somebody behind you going, this is great, you know. And if if your parents don't want to do it, that's fine. But, you know, they shouldn't be going, oh, just come eat these pork chops and all this sweet tea, you know. Yeah, and that's one I mean, thing they, they don't. And exactly. That's good. Yeah. Because you need a support system. And yeah. that's what, you know we are as far as accountability and teaching and being the support that that's needed because people need accountability i remember when you first started uh doing the crossfit out in rustin and you were working there and you you, you were still with the basketball team but you were doing crossfit every, mm -hmm. every week every day and uh you started putting me through some workouts oh yeah i remember those days thinking and she keeps yelling at me. She I'm, crazy. I'm, I'm gonna get up. Yeah. If I can get up. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm yeah. gonna throw this this dumbbell at her. I keep waiting on you to come walk through these doors. <laughs> yeah. She can keep waiting. Uh huh. Yeah. You because know, even when I do go work out in my little shed in the back of my parents' house, uh, in the sweat box is what I call mm -hmm. it. Um, I hear Sarah's voice in my head when I'm when I'm re when I'm ready to quit. I used to get mad at her, but I, oh, yeah. still, I hear her in my head pushing me through that last little set. And um, I have I still have my little green book of all the workouts we did, mm -hmm. and I go through them all the time. Yeah, Sarah's um, as far as accountability, Sarah's a very good person to have in that respect. Yeah, I don't like I don't like um, you know it it. It's funny because I need accountability too. So this is what people don't understand. They don't. So <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm, you know, accountable and and 
keep track of over a hundred people and you know who's looking out for me sometimes and it's hard because you know that there's days where I just don't want to do it or I get in a rut you know and I'm like I, I don't want to work out or whatever it's late I'm tired I've been working been at the gym you know just gonna order pizza like those are easy choices mm. and so you know I need accountability too um you know, which is why, you know, people get, especially owners of, of businesses, get mentors and, um, you know, people that, that can hold you accountable, not only for the business side, but for your, your own health, too. Um, so not only, you know, is it all about making sure people are, are doing what they're supposed to do, but I got to be doing what I'm supposed to be doing, too. Uh, what uh, Where would you like to go with this next? What do you think is the next best thing to tell people when it comes to um, nutrition? So I think that, you know, whatever you choose, um, find something and, and I'll just, I'll tell you a little bit more about, about what we do because if you're somebody that, um, you know, is listening and needs the accountability and maybe in our area, but somebody else, or I can guide you to the right person, um, we do what's called a, a nutrition consult um or no snack intro or um and it is about a 20 minute consult where you come in we put you on an in-body machine which is a, a pretty fancy machine that <clears throat> not only weights measured differently so if you step on you know your scale at home it's going to be different from the in-body because it might not read um, body fat mass and skeletal muscle. So we put you on that, give you an idea of kind of where you are. And then from there, you can pick packages. We work with Healthy, Healthy Steps Nutrition and Nicole Aquan, who is a registered dietitian who also owns a CrossFit gym. So she understands not only from the RD side, but also from the athlete side. So then if you decide to get put on a plan, you'll work closely with Melinda and she'll do a customized meal plan, a four week meal plan. And then from there, you'll have a, an hour and a half long meeting. And then depending on the plan, you'll have, you know, certain meetings, certain goal reviews, food log reviews. So there's a lot to it. Um, but it's a lot of accountability. We really, if you're listening and want to do it, call us, come in. Um, if you just have questions, hit us up. Um, but if anything, start with the plate method. And what that is, is put a plate in front of you, put half of it as veggies, a quarter of it as a lean protein, and then a quarter of it as a, um, non-starchy carbohydrate and start there um and then just start exercising walking um find you a crossfit gym find you some kind of accountability exercise buddy and just get moving but that's kind of where i guess i would tell people to start would be the plate method unless they know they they're ready for some accountability and they can come in and hit us up and we'll get them on the right track and for anyone who's who's listening right now and is trying to take all this in and trying to you know write it down as fast as it's coming out of, out of Sarah's mouth, no no worries. You can go to her website, CrossFitPortside.com. They have all this information. Everything that she just laid out is right there for you. Has the phone number. Has you know meal plans. Has uh, you know all the different pricing levels for each plan. You know each kind of nutrition plan. And I'm looking at the in body machine right now. I'm just telling you now, <laughs> that it doesn't look like anything I want to step on. <laughs> but um, you know it does have a lot of benefits on on yeah. the other end. <laughs> yeah, and some people like. I mean, it's just it's important to know where you are so that we can see, you know, as your journey unfolds, you know, have you know, if you look at a picture in front of you and see a hundred and sixty five pound woman, and then right next to it is another one hundred sixty five pound woman, they could look completely different, and that's the thing. Like you know, I tell people all the time. You're looking at me, but 
last I weighed was 148. People look at me, they're like, hey, you know what? Right. Yeah. I'm five feet tall uh -huh. and got a lot of muscle. But, um, you know, it's just they don't understand that until they kind of, you know, see that picture of, okay, well, I could be 168 and then the scale might not move as much, but guess what? My muscle mass has gone up and my body fat has gone down. So those are huge key points in, in what the embody does. Just kind of, you know, putting a bow on this episode. I, and if we get repetitive, we just get repetitive. What, as far as like taking the first step, what would you suggest somebody out there who's listening right now thinking, you know, that sounds like a pretty good idea, but I'm a little shy. I'm mm -hmm. a little, you know, suspect. I've never really done anything like that before. You know, I might be in my mid-30s. Mm -hmm. you know, I might be younger and just yeah. have never even thought about doing something like that. I might be older. Mm -hmm. You know, e either way, what, is, what would your suggestion of being the first step to do? Do just it. Pick up the phone. Go for it. Call. Go for it. Well, and there, there's two, you know, there's a couple, I mean, we're not scary, number one. Mm -mm. That are actually very approachable yeah. people. And number two, it's we want to help you. So the minute we can find out your goals and understand where you are, then we can better service you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a, a lot of people will come in and, and think they don't need the accountability. And at the end of the day, they do, you know, and they end up maybe getting a, a different package. But um, it, it's not easy. But when you have somebody at your fingertips that you can constantly message and say, am I doing this right? You know, what do you suggest here? I'm in Boston right now and I've been in planes. Like, how can I eat? Those are, I mean, those are, these are everyday problems. Mm. And we're here here to help. So my biggest thing is is get here, talk to somebody about it. Um, and if that just doesn't work, like I said, start with that plate method. Start by on your plate, at lunch and dinner first. You know, half veggies, quarter uh, lean protein, and a quarter of. Um, a non-starchy carb if you have to if you're still hungry and need to go back for seconds go get veggies then protein then carbs you just said something that made me think about something else I wanted to ask you mm -hmm. as far as someone who might have a job where they're traveling a lot yeah what are your suggestions as far as like I, I know I've seen people have these little deals where they take these little meals with them. Mm -hmm. uh, they have them shipped to the hotel mm -hmm. that they're staying at. Yeah. What are your suggestions as far as what to do on the road? Yeah, there's there's so many things, and there's tons of places that are trying to to be healthier. A lot of whole thirty menu yeah. sections out there. Mm -hmm. And you can number one, you you can take you know take stuff in the airport. So if you pack your own stuff, and then there are certain places. In the airport that you can get decent stuff um, but if you go to a restaurant you know it, it's as simple as still the plate method you may ask them to put you know don't cook it in butter or um, you know put sauces on the side you know I, I personally the one thing I hear all the time I'm eating healthy, you know, I mean, I've had a salad for lunch, and I've had this for, I'm like, okay, salads tend to not be that healthy, like, as much as people are like, oh, I'm having this salad, and blah, 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 um, you know, you're better off with, give me a grilled chicken breast, you know, tons of veggies and a side of rice, uh, you know, if you're, you get a salad, all of a sudden, it's like, it's got you know, whatever nuts, sugared cranberries, ranch dressing, you know, it, it can really add up cheese. And iceberg lettuce has, uh, other than getting a little water, it ain't got no nutrients, really. Mm. So you got to have the greener, the better, uh, the darker green. Okay. So, you know, you can go to restaurants and you can make substitutions and they're willing to do it. You just have to ask. 
Okay. So that's my thought on traveling. Right. You know, if you're somebody that knows that's not happening, you can, you know, always research and have something maybe sent to the hotel. Mm. Um, you know, if that, I know, like, probably the the athletes that are, you know, like, conscious more about their um, food and travel a lot, that probably happens a good bit. Yeah, it's funny. Athletes, you would think, I'll say this, former athletes, you would think would be a lot more conscious than a lot of them are. But I noticed that many former athletes, when you see them and they have not played their sport in a long, long time, they've uh, put on that uh, that old that old that old woman or that old man weight. Yeah. And well, my mom always told me she was like, "When you stop playing, you can't eat the amount of meals that you had. Um, you can't eat the amount of meals that you know you did as a player." And I was like, you know, that didn't resonate to me. And I quit playing and, you know, just ate whatever. And, and really, I was still young and pretty active. And it's probably only been, you know, as you, as you age, does it get harder? I don't know. Probably yes and no. But, you know, you're, it's never too late to learn and do and your body will absolutely thank you um i just got done with a one-on-one -on -one prep course and it's funny her dad's i don't know 73 and my parents are late 60s early 70s and we talk about that generation being the processed food generation and it's linked to you know potential cancer um, because it seems like that age group just continues to pop up with, you know. Yeah. So, you know, you, you just wonder, is it environmental? What are we doing to our bodies that's, you know, potentially a harmonist? I mean, it could be anything. Social media, now phone, constantly on phone. You got a watch. It's got a laser going into you, you know. When, when are we ever going to check out and unplug and, you know, and that's, that's a whole nother rant I could go on, but, um, but yeah, I mean, we're talking about that generation, you know, it was easy. Their parents started throwing them, you know, anything out of a box or can or whatever, just cause it was easy and cheap and, the fast food joints came into play and um i mean that's kind of kind of where you probably start to see a bit you know more obesity and cancers well uh i guess that's gonna put a wrap on this one anything else you want to say as far as I mean, it, I mean we've already said pretty much everything you know just hey if you're out there and you're listening you want to get started look on the website and check it out research uh, and even if you're not from around the mississippi gulf coast they're still willing to help I and mean, they're still you know they, a lot of things you can do over the phone mm -hmm. so uh, and like i said these people are very approachable around here trust me i'm not a very big time social person but and you know i can be often shy and timid and kind of in the back of the room type deal but when I come in here, I mean, even if it's somebody I've never even met for, like when I first was, I came here today, we're actually recording from Sarah's office. Uh, when I came here today, I was setting up, a, a young lady came in um, to another part of the office, and she looked at me and said, hey, how are you? And, and, you know, hey, how are you back or whatever? And I've never seen her before in my life. But they're just that type of people. It's that kind of vibe around here. So all good all good things around here across the port side. Love um, it. Love it. Anyway, that's going to be our show for today. Uh, thank you for listening. And if you want to uh, learn more about the show, you can go to Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, at Coastal Combos. Email address if you want to email any questions you might have for Sarah or for me, uh, CoastalCombos at gmail.com. And uh, like I said, Sarah's CrossFit Portside 
uh, dot com and CrossFit Foresight at gmail dot com for any, any questions you got there. All right, that's gonna be a wrap on it today. Thank you all for listening. And again, my name is Brian McKay, and I am with Sarah Carter. <laughs> this has been Coastal Convos. Thank you all for listening. <laughs> Holla. Thank you for listening to Coastal Conversations. 